All right, guys. Uh, California Senate debate just concluded. Uh, it was on Fox 11 and uh, K- KFI uh, a- AM 640 here in L.A. Uh, you had uh, four people on the stage. Uh, three of them are Congress people, Adam Schiff, Kitty Porter, and Barbara Lee. And the fourth is Steve Garvey, who was a Dodger and a Padre, uh, a baseball player. There was hilarious moments uh, in the debate, almost all provided by Steve Garvey, which I'll tell you about. Uh, there's two people who uh, I want to win, and there are two people who I thought won this debate, not necessarily the same people. Uh, so my job is to be an analyst for you guys, and so I'm going to tell you and give you my perspective. So I'm going to tell you who I think won, who I uh, wish had won, uh, and uh, and break down the issues for you guys. So uh, first of all, thank you to all of our members that make covers like this possible. We literally can't do the show without you guys, and if ever there was a time to join, it is now. So uh, it's not just a generic call. It's a call for you out there watching. Uh, please support our programming so that we can give you more of it. TYT.com slash join or hit the join button below on YouTube. And obviously we'll break down everything uh, as we always do all the news Monday through Friday, 6 to 8 p.m. Uh, live on the Young Turks with uh, Anna Kasparian and myself. All right. So uh, Steve Garvey uh, is the Republican in the race, but he doesn't want to be too Republican because... Uh, he knows that if he makes it in the top two in California, uh, he'll have no chance of winning the election overall if he says that he would vote for Trump. Now, we know that he's already voted twice for Trump. We know that he's going to vote for Trump this time. There's no question about it, but he won't answer the question. And it was hilarious. So, and But beyond that, he seemed like frozen caveman politician. Uh, he's like, well, let me tell you. And he looks like he's from the leftover from the 1980s when he used to play baseball. He's trying to be like a Ronald Reagan, but it's like decades later. He sounds so uh, slow and lethargic while trying to sound serious and gentlemanly. Uh, he doesn't answer the questions in a, in a straightforward way. And his main argument for getting elected was, did you know I was a Dodger? Yeah, dude, we all know. Okay, Katie Porter had the best line of the night when uh, he refused to answer the Trump questions. She said, once a Dodger, always a Dodger. But don't boom. I like it. I like it a lot. Katie Porter and Anna Schiff were definitely the most prepared for the debate. Um, So you could tell that they practiced their answers. And having done it many times before, I, I, I could definitely tell. But that's good. That means they're prepared. That means they're trying hard. That means they work hard on it. Uh, so, uh, now I'm not giving away who I want to win, at least not later in the, in this, in fact, I'm still undecided. That's the amazing thing. I'm, I've been undecided about a race in a long, long time. So, um, and then Garvey had this line when, uh, I think it was Katie Porter who challenged him and he said, you're banging on that trash can like the Astros. And I'm sure if you're like a Dodgers fan or a baseball fan, you got that illusion. But they, you could hear a groan from the audience like, huh? <laughs> so he provided the comic relief. I enjoyed that. But the real, so remember in California, uh, top two, doesn't matter which party, go on to the uh, general election. So Steve Garvey is not necessarily going to make it in the top two. But the problem is that Barbara Lee and Katie Porter are splitting up the progressive vote. So there's some chance they both get knocked out. And then you have Adam Schiff versus Steve Garvey. Okay, so I'll tell you my perspective on that uh, first here. And then I'll get back to the analysis of uh, of who won and what they said. Uh, yeah, that, that would be, in my opinion, a disaster if it's uh, Adam Schiff and Steve Garvey. Adam Schiff is mainly the establishment corporate Democrat. And Steve Garvey is mainly a Dodger. Uh, so, I mean, he had some terrible answers. Steve Garvey said that we should not have a two-state solution. And when asked, should we ever have a two-state solution? He said, maybe in the next generation. Oh, okay. Okay. So we'll have to wait for 20 years, 40 years for peace. It's just an abysmal answer. Little, you know, both in terms of substance, but also if you're running for the Senate seat, you would hope that you have an answer for one of the top problems in foreign policy than, I don't know, let the kids handle in the next generation. So, look, you, you're not going to be surprised that I'm not in favor of the Republican and that he was totally unprepared. Um, and so now to the main event between the three Democrats. Look, uh, 
Adam Schiff's case is clear. He he says, I'm the guy who gets things done. Now, if you, whether that's true or untrue, that's the case he made throughout uh, the debate. And and he and I'm the part uh, the guy that the party wants to win. So he dropped in his endorsement from Nancy Pelosi. He nearly implied that Diane Feinstein had endorsed him. She's of course dead, so that is less likely. Uh, so <laughs> I have researched whether she said anything about him uh, before she passed away, but honestly, she had had uh, dementia for a long, long time, so it wouldn't matter what she said. Uh, so. Uh, but he's basically saying, I'm the guy that the rest of the, uh, the party wants. Now, if you're an establishment Democrat, you are going to love Adam Schiff. So I, I get it, brothers and sisters. You're a Hillary Clinton voter, Joe Biden voter, et, et, et cetera. It, you like Nancy Pelosi and Gavin Newsom. Oh, you're going to love Adam Schiff. In, in my opinion, as you know, I'm a progressive. I don't believe that he gets anything done. I, I think that all he does is get take the donor money and pass bills that the donors want. Uh, and then they pretend they got things done and they all pat each other on the ass. So, but was he one of the two winners of this debate? Definitely. He was very sharp. If you're, if you're not knee deep or neck deep in politics, you're not going to know all the things that I know about how he didn't actually get things done and how he takes a tremendous amount of corporate donations and basically serves those donors. I can give you dozens of examples, but not, you know, almost none of it came up tonight, except for a dramatic moment at the end, which I was surprised by because it didn't look like they were going to go in that direction at all until Katie Porter at the end said, look, I didn't know how much dirty money you'd taken until I started running against you, but you you get financed by big oil, big pharma, et cetera. And I was like, damn, shots fired, finally. Okay, so that added a, and it's not false drama. It's not just for soap opera. No, that's super important. Uh, so, you know, you got to know. And I Look, you know me. I, I would emphasize that to no end, and I would have started with that. I would have uh, said it in the middle, and I would have said it at the end. But I'm glad that she said it at the uh, at once, at least, to say, look, you you, you take that uh, basically dirty uh, lobbyist, special interest money, and you cater to them. And that's true, then. That's the number one problem with Adam Schiff. So, uh, you know, I'm separate. And then he, you know, he always pretends to be a, a progressive on some of the issues. So he claims he's for Medicare for all. He's totally Johnny come lately. There's no way he's for Medicare for all. He takes uh, big pharma money, health insurance money. Uh, Nancy Pelosi says that she's for universal health care when she's the one who killed universal health care. So I don't believe Adam Schiff at all on that. Uh, based on his record, he, you know, he says things like, oh, I, I agree with Barbara Lee. Housing is a right. And I fought for low-income housing. Well, brother, then how come we don't have it in California? You say you get things done, uh, but on low-income housing, on homelessness, you say about how much you're concerned. Well, what did you get done? Wall-to-wall <laughs> -wall, uh, homeless folks here in California. So it's not, not quite the brag that you think it is. But if you're a regular voter who doesn't know all the details about his uh, policies, etc., he looked incredibly smooth. You think he's going to be a Democrat that's going to fight for you. And he got this giant advantage because not only was he one of the prosecutors of Donald Trump in the impeachment, which he mentioned several times. In fact, one of the, the so-called tough question that they had, or here's the main criticism they have of you, Congressperson, the moderators say, and I like the moderators. Alex Michelson's a good guy. Uh, he's moderated debate I was in, and there was a, uh, a moderator from Political. They did a perfectly good job. But, you know, the main criticism of, except for I would say this particular thing, main criticism they said of Adam Schiff was, uh, you know, the Republicans say that you lied when you took on Donald Trump, which is such a softball because it allows Adam Schiff to say, I was courageous in how I took on Donald Trump, and I'll do it again, right? <laughs> so that's not really <laughs> a criticism. I mean, yes, it is but one that massively helps him, right? So, okay, so that's Schiff. Now we get to the main event, which is Barbara Lee versus Katie Porter. Now, I've looked at the polling. Schiff is leading in some polls by a little bit, in other polls by up to nine, which in this race is a big number, right? Uh, so, so anywhere from a small to a relatively large lead. The other three are jammed up, and they're it could be any of the other three that makes it in. I mean, look, it's possible that Schiff doesn't even make it in because in some polls he's only leading by two. But um, but it, it really is a question of whether Katie Porter – there's two questions, whether Katie Porter and ba Barbara Lee are going to eat so much into each other's votes that Steve Garvey uh, makes it into the final two 
or uh, which one is going to come out ahead and be able to enter the final two. Because all you got to look, I don't know that Katie Porter or Barbara Lee are, is going to beat Adam Schiff if he really is the, the leader and, and the, those are the two that make it in. Um, because a, a lot of California Democrats do like establishment Democrats. They do like Nancy Pelosi. They do like Gavin Newsom. And 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 they think, yeah, I don't want too much change. I want the, the corporate establishment dude that's going to protect the status quo. So that's totally possible. And he's going to have a lot more money and he's going to have all the Democrats backing him and the infrastructure and the media in general is way more friendly to him, et cetera. But at least I'd love an opportunity for one of them to beat him. Because if it's Steve Garvey, it's totally useless. That you know, whoever Steve Garvey's up against is going to win. Garvey not only is you know has the problem with Trump and all the other Republican positions that he holds that are never going to get him elected in California, but he also has the problem of uh, not being able to speak clearly and mumbling and pretending to be a gentleman and not giving clear answers. So he's he's not long for this political life. Uh, so it would be so useless if he was the second person in the general election. I, you know, so the, again, my perspective is I definitely, I mean, the dream for me is Katie Porter versus Barbara Lee, and we figure out who's the better candidate in that longer form. Because now I can tell you, going in, I wasn't sure who I'm going to vote for. Coming out, I'm not sure who I'm going to vote for. Okay, but the second winner of the debate is is Katie Porter. Very well prepared, had great themes that she kept coming back to so she she clearly seemed like the anti-corruption candidate so she talked about how she fights corporations how she doesn't take she's the only one out of the congress people that doesn't take corporate PAC money that is very important okay uh she talked about ending insider trading uh through the stock act uh she talked about fighting earmarks now the other two barbara lee and and Adam Schiff said, no, 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 earmarks are good. We need to bring them home to California. California doesn't get enough money. But Katie Porter make, made really good points against earmarks, which is how a lot of uh, localized corruption happens. And she made a, a point that I hadn't considered enough, where she said, uh, you know, a lot of times the earmarks are just to help the specific donors of the politicians. And I was like, wow, that's such a good point. And so... Um, and by the way, guys, while, while I'm doing this live, uh, if you join, I'll try to give you guys a shout out if you hit the join button below. Uh, and uh, and obviously, uh, you know, if you upgrade or you use Super Chat, I'll try to get to you if I can. Uh, so she made the great points against that. Uh, her answer on housing was great. Uh, Anna would have appreciated it. She mentioned Wall Street. And how they were some of the problems, the, the big bankers were driving some of the problems with housing. That's things that politicians don't often talk about. But the fact that she's corporate free, like without any corporate PAC money, allows her to do that. And that is absolutely right. And that was a terrific answer. Um, on the other hand, her answer on Israel is not great. Uh, so she says she's for a ceasefire eventually. And that means you're not for a ceasefire. No, the ceasefire needs to happen now. 25,000 dead already. Every day, more and more people are dying. Uh, ha a quarter of uh, Gaza is already starving. Uh, that's 500,000 people. No, we don't need a ceasefire later. We need it yesterday. So uh, I don't agree with her on that. Uh, but everything else, uh, you know, she did a stand-up job. And remember, there's the difference between is she the right person to vote for, which I'm not sure yet. Uh, and did she do a great job in the debate? She did. She did a great job in the debate. So now Barbara Lee, stylistically, she was a little rougher around the edges, right? But, uh, and it, it, she seemed a tiny bit nervous in the beginning. On the other hand, I don't really care about the style so much. I care about the substance. Yes, but what's her position? So uh, on there, the best on Gaza by far, uh, and talking about a ceasefire, and she was for a ceasefire on October 8th. Some of you might not like that, but she's always been in favor of peace and not war. She was a lone vote against authorizing the war against Afghanistan, and she made the point, war leads to more war, peace leads to more peace. Totally, 100% agree with her on that. Um, she made a really good point about how uh, on universal health care, she doesn't just talk to talk, she walks the walk. She sponsored universal health care back when she was in the California legislature. That was a long time ago. And she did that back when it wasn't popular, just like her vote on Afghanistan. Uh, and, 
And she says she signed on to be a co-sponsor of Medicare for All right away, and not waiting for a convenient time. That's a shot at Adam Schiff, uh, who joined just to, for the optics of it. Uh, and if you know politics, you know that that's the case. Uh, and um, and then uh, she had two more uh, really solid points. One was just rhetorically, um, Steve Garvey had this thing about, I went and talked to homeless people. Did you know I'm a Dodger? Also played for the Padres, don't like the Astros. And as I was talking to the homeless person, I touched them because I do that. And Barbara Lee, then the answer was like, that's the most patronizing thing I've ever seen. She's like, look, I had a rough time in my youth and I was on house for a little while. I, I don't love the term on house, but whatever it is, okay. She's like, look, I, I lived through that. And if somebody came and talked to me about how proud they were to touch me, that would be deeply offensive. So Totally right on that. I love that she busted him on that. And then, uh, but I would argue even more importantly, because it affects so many things. Uh, when it came to the issue of abortion, she said, I'm going to end the filibuster. That's it. This The, the filibuster is nonsense. It was originally started uh, to protect, uh, you know, segregation and to, uh, and to uh, prevent civil rights bills from getting passed. Totally accurate description of the filibuster's history. She said it's uh, stopping all progress now. And without the filibuster, we could pass, uh, you know, uh, a law making sure that women have the right uh, to reproductive rights uh, throughout the whole country. Uh, and Adam Schiff, in his usual Johnny Come Lately, thinks, oh, I totally agree that women should be protected. And I'm not sure we did enough as Democrats when we were in charge. Brother, if they tried to do it, you were the one who would have blocked them. Okay. But anyway, I'll give, uh, you know, I guess credit where credit is due. He says he's in favor of that and in favor of ending the filibuster. Given his track record, I don't really believe him, but okay, that's what he said. That's what Adam Schiff said. So, and, and at least we'll have to, you know, we, we could hold him to that uh, if he wins. So, um, so if you were knew all the policies and you're progressive, I think that you might have been impressed by Barbara Lee uh, in, in terms of her substance. If you're again just a regular voter, which is who they're trying to get and you're not, your job isn't politics, she would have looked a little rougher, and and she seems to be, and you could take this any way you like, the most left out of the four candidates. Some might view that as incredibly positive, some might not, et cetera. So, so I, I think, Kate, remember, the two are going to advance. So I think Adam Schiff and Katie Porter won the debate, uh, but in terms of who I'm going to vote for and who I th think had the best positions and the most likely to get things done, uh, I, that's definitely either Barbara Lee or Katie Porter. And, um, and at this point, as a voter in California, I'm still undecided. Uh, I would love to see a debate of just those two. I mean, I'd and I'd love to do it on the Young Turks. I don't know if they're open to that, but, uh, but that would be a lot more informative for progressives and, and especially because, you know, we're tough. And so we're respectful because we like both of those candidates. But at the same time, you know, I'd love to ch challenge them on on how they can get things done and what exactly their positions are to help us make up our minds. But but overall, I think Barbara Lee had uh, the most substantively positive progressive policies. And but Katie Porter had the best anti-corruption uh policies and 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 arguments in this debate so it was a good debate it, it give you a, gave you a decent chance to to get a sense of where they really are uh but i'd love to dive deeper uh to figure out uh if we should go with katie porter or barbara lee uh but uh happy to have watched the debate hopefully uh you, you know you got a sense of where they are from this summary and uh and we'll see how that uh, race tracks and and for them uh super tuesday uh, march 5th is the primary uh, along with the presidential primaries so they're getting really close here and uh and so we'll keep track of it on the show obviously monday to friday 6 to 8 p.m live every day and we appreciate everybody who joins so hit that join button if you can much love we'll see you tomorrow